Welcome to the Catbird Quilts. I'm Kathy Martin, and it has recently been brought to my attention that not everyone that watches my videos is on Instagram and can see what I'm working on, and that some of you might actually be interested in what I'm currently working on. So with that in mind, I'm gonna show you what's on my sewing table and have a lot to say about it. Feel like something's missing. I want to say my sewing machine is missing, but this is my sewing table. Everybody knows this is my sewing table. I had been on Instagram and found a quilt pattern from a really sweet designer that I just loved. And the name of the quilt pattern is Eyelet Lace Quilt. And it's by Christina from Kindred Quilt Company. And it's actually her very first quilt pattern. And every time I looked at this pattern or looked at quilts and pictures of quilts that people were making with that pattern, I thought, oh, that's so pretty. And I had designs on maybe trying it out as a Christmas quilt and then doing a um, great quilt pattern story, uh, not story, great quilt pattern video on it if it ended up being, in fact, a great quilt pattern. It's now November and it's a little late <laughs> to be starting a Christmas quilt. And P.S. I've never made a Christmas quilt, just like I've never made a fall quilt. I decided to make a practice block because I'm now convinced of the value of the practice block. And I put it on Instagram and kind of threw out there, I think I might want to make a Christmas quilt. What do y'all think? And of course, overwhelming do it, do it, you can do it, I believe in you, <laughs> I think you should, and which is, of course, I wanted to from the beginning, or I wouldn't have put it out there, but it's November, and Christmas is in less than a month, so, but that's what I'm working on right now, so I want to show you um, the blocks that are from this quilt that I'm making now that won't be done by Christmas, I have discovered some things about working with plaid, and in this case, it's gingham, which is in its own way a type of plaid. And I have had some people ask, um, how do you, like, how do you work with plaids? How do you make sure plaids are straight? Here was the first block. And I don't know if you saw the thrift haul where I went to the Goodwill and my husband went with me, and I thought it was gonna be a bust, and I ended up with everything under the sun. One of the things I ended up with was this red, uh, this beautiful, it's almost crimson. I had taken a little sample of the red gingham fabric with me because I was looking for a solid to go with it and realized it is almost identical in color. So I bought this shirt at the thrift store. I had this one. Actually, it's in a thrift haul video too. It's huge, this red gingham, and I just loved it. So I made this block just as a test and instantly went, oh, that's so pretty. And it's big, it's, it's a big block, which I haven't done a lot of really large block quilts. So this is the block that I made as a practice and was immediately in love with it. It's so pretty. It just looks so clean and tidy. And the way the gingham played out, I thought was really lovely. And so I decided that I would in fact forge ahead. I'm gonna stop and show you the coloring page that I did for it. So let me move this out of the way. To all you design, quilt pattern designers out there, love the coloring sheets. If you have an opportunity to do the coloring sheet, please put one in there because it is so great for those of us that like to play around with color. This is the coloring sheet. This is actually the queen size. Um, and I chose that and then made it smaller because of where I wanted the edge of the quilt to fall. There's a baby and a throw and then a queen. It's on point, meaning that the blocks are attached diagonally. And I just wanted it to kind of end at a different place. So what I did is I took the queen size coloring sheet, marked off all of what I didn't want to use, and then 
I colored in kind of my plan, my desire for the quilt. And so you can see it is green and blue and red. And I lightly shaded in the areas that I thought I might use gingham. Showed my family, everybody agreed, which is good because it's probably gonna be our Christmas quilt. One of the commenters on the Instagram post was the designer herself. And she's like, you should do it, it won't take long, which is so wonderful. And I messaged her separately and was like, well, it shouldn't, except I've kind of changed up how the colorway is on it. And so I was like, I hope you don't mind, took a screenshot, sent it to her, and she said, I think you can do it, just make one block at a time. How cool is that? How great is that, that the designer First of all, even commented. Second of all, was so gracious. Third of all, she said in the message, oh, I love it when people do different things because then you can see what your pattern can do. So that was great. And then to have her advice on how to proceed and I messaged her back, I'm like, you know, it's like you wrote the pattern. <laughs> like. So that was really great. So she's like, I mean, just do one block at a time. So that's what I've been doing. So I want to show you the other blocks and then I want to tell you about working a little bit with plaid. So here's the green. Oops. I went with a kind of dark forest, but this particular green has a lot of blue in it, which I really like because I feel like it has, it kind of invokes that Christmas tree and like you know, Douglas fir and all those, they have a real blue undertone. I made the red block and then I made the green block and then I made the blue block. So these are the three blocks. These are three colors that will be in the quilt. And I'm hoping it's gonna really have that kind of cool Christmas feel. And what I have noticed in working and doing these blocks and working with gingham, which as you know, if you've watched this channel even once, I love gingham. I just, I don't know what it is about it. I just love it. But working with gingham can be tricky. And so I wanna show you some things that about gingham um, that can probably be applied to other plaids as well. When you are cutting your fabric, what is generally widely accepted is that you cut on the grain, which means you're cutting along the line of the threads that run this way or this way. So with the grain of the fabric. When it comes to working with plaids and gingham in particular, I basically totally disregard the grain, the grain line. And I use my ruler and I line up along the actual lines of the plaid. And then that way, even if the grain is somewhat distorted, although in theory, those should be the same thing uh, because the lines of the plaid are the grain, but they can get kind of distorted and, and that's when it starts getting tricky. So I'm gonna get my ruler down and I wanna show you. So I have extolled the virtue of starching your fabric <laughs> before you cut it because it stabilizes it, it'll hold the line and also keep it from raveling. There's just a lot of, there's just a lot of value <laughs> in using spray starch. Tricky though sometimes when you're working with plaids because as you spray down your fabric or douse it or baptize it or whatever you do to get your spray starch in your um, fabric, sometimes the lines of the fabric, the lines of the plaid can kind of get warped. And then when they dry that way with the spray starch, then now that's kind of set in. And if you cut it that way, it's just not gonna be straight. And I wanted just to demonstrate that with these strips of blue that I have cut. So those, these, um, I think she calls them the large petals, this right here, is actually a square block that you sew a white square to and then fold it back. Um, so I knew I was gonna need 
a lot of five by five squares. So I had starched this pretty heavily. Now, if you're just watching the video, you're probably not gonna notice that a couple of these are really not straight on the X, Y axis. And it's a good time for me to stop and say, that is exactly what will happen if it's in a quilt. So you can be as precise as you want to be, but when it's all said and done and pieced and stitched and then quilt sandwich and quilted and then washed and dried, almost no one will be able to see any kind of crooked unless it's just radically off. Most people will never notice. And so I'm gonna highlight that by showing you with my ruler. So I cut this particular strip, I lined it up on the edge of what would have been one dark line. So gingham itself is made up of the dark stripes and the white stripes, and then where they come together, it's medium. So I picked one stripe and I laid my ruler down and I lined it up as close as I could and I just on my um, self-healing mat. And if you will look, I'm gonna point right here. And then I'm gonna point right here. <laughs> and then I'm gonna point right here. You can see this is not straight. It is straight, it's a straight cut and it is true. But if you look at the stripe that's below it, the dark blue kind of comes in and out. And then down here at the end, it's not even, this, this white stripe does not even make it to the end. But if you look at that, and if I were to just cut a five inch square, you would not know. So that's kind of lesson number one about working with plaid. You, you give it your best shot to be straight on the line, and then you just kind of <laughs> let it be because it is what it is. This one is actually pretty straight, although even here I see, and there's a place here that's kind of, I say this word a lot on this channel, warpy. It's warped. Um, and where it's really, really obvious is right here at the end, which thankfully I won't use this little section, but you can see right there, holy mackerel, look how not square that is. That is just crazy. So that's gonna get cut off, but the one that's to me really the most extreme is this one. It's, it's pretty decent in the middle, but if you look at this line, it goes and then back. And so what happened is when this was starched, I did not, when I flattened it out, I probably pushed the fabric, sorry, that's loud. I pushed the fabric and it is so thin, it was probably like this, and I pushed, which made it have that warp in the actual plaid. So I did that actually and Two of the four that I had for this block had that kind of bent bend in the plaid. And so what I did, once I had it cut and realized, oh gosh, that's really not very straight. I used my white squares to cover that section of the plaid up. <laughs> Just covered it up. So for example, here's, here's one of the ones that's kind of warped. So what I did is I put that on that side and it would be covered up and then this, and then what was left in the middle was actually pretty straight. So when you're doing your piecing with plaid, if you look down and notice that it's kind of not really straight and it's gonna be pieced together with something else, use your other pieces to hide the parts that are a little not straight and then what will be left is straight and no one will notice. So that's, that's one of the things. Number two of the things, and this is especially true with gingham, gingham because it's a check, it feels like it's 
dark blue stripes and white stripes and that there is no sense of direction. Um, I, I, you can turn it this way on the X axis or this way on the Y axis and it's the same. But the reality is with most ginghams, there you can kind of feel where the horizontal dark sticks out more or the vertical dark sticks out more. I hope that makes sense. Let me see if I can show you. In this green, for example, when I look at that, the, the line that, oh goodness gracious, let me start. <laughs> In this green uh, patch, for example, the dark green that sticks out to me is the one that's running this way. So from my vantage point, that's a horizontal dark green row. If I turn it this way, I see it as vertical. Even though it really is just kind of a check, it, it does have a direction. And I did not pay attention to that when I first started making these blocks. It's less obvious on the blue. I can see it a little bit on the red. Let me show you on the red. So. The red that sticks out to me from this vantage point is vertical. This one is vertical. This one is horizontal. This one is horizontal. And again, driving home the point, if I had not pointed that out to you, you would not look at that block and go, two of those petals are on the horizontal and two are on the vertical. Or at least I don't think you would, unless you were being very ungenerous. I would not have noticed that. I noticed it because when I went to do the green block, I thought, oh, I'll, I probably need to make sure these are turned the right way. <laughs> so when you're cutting and piecing your plaids, it might be well to consider. So, and if I had to do this block again, I would do what I have now done with the green blocks, which is the opposing petals. So the horizontals would go this way the verticals would go this way. Let me show you that in an actual block. So this was a block that I made yesterday after I started paying attention. And what I did when I was doing my piecing, I had my fabric squares and I turned them all the same way. So all of them were on the horizontal and I sewed all my white squares to it. And then when I got ready to piece them, I realized that some were gonna get turned. So this one is on the horizontal and this one is on the vertical, but that way it's at least symmetrical and logical. So vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. So it's almost like a windmill as it's going around the block. Um, but again, probably wouldn't notice. So really when it comes to working with gingham and cutting straight and sewing straight and lining them up, it's just, you be as precise as you wanna be. And if you wanna be perfectly precise where all, all of your horizontals are going the same way in every block, it, within a block and in every other block, then you have to make that level of observation and attention when you cut your fabric and then when you stitch your pieces together with it. That's not so much a tip as just, it's kind of like lessons that I'm learning while I'm working with plaids. What I will probably do moving forward with all of the rest of the blocks is I will do them exactly like I did this green one so that there is continuity between the blocks. So it'll be vertical, horizontal, vertical, horizontal. And once I have them cut square, if there's a kind of a place that's bent, I'll put it underneath those white triangles so it's not as obvious. And if I get to one that's really badly out of shape, I'll probably just cut another one. So that's something to think about. And then if you have like this, a huge swath of background and then kind of a pretty precise, like in this case, this is a, a little square. Um, I think that that attention to detail, much like the people who do EPP and FPP and do fussy cutting, it kind of behooves you to fussy cut because a lot of attention is being drawn to that center. But at the same time, when you're working with plaids, if you have sashing or like in this case, there's a lot of white in between 
each piece, that can be a great way to use plaid because it's not one plaid right up against the other and you don't have to worry about all those pieces matching just right. So anyway, food for thought. So that's my Christmas quilt. Um, I have a lot of work to do. It's probably not gonna get done by Christmas or it will get done by Christmas. It just might not get done by this Christmas. <laughs> And there's one other thing I wanted to show you that's on my sewing table right now. And this is a, this a project that I started and I have actually referenced it in the Quilty Stars Great Quilt Pattern. Um, I made that block that had the navy blue and we liked it in our house so much that it has become the, this will become a quilt sort of thing. So let me show you that. This is the first block that I made. And in the, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. Great Quilt Patterns, Quilty Stars by Quilty Love. It is such a wonderful pattern because it highlights the beauty of fabrics. And because there's so much variation, you can use a lot of little pieces and scraps and things that you really loved that fabric and put them together. This is actually a great example of some plaids that I did both well and not well. <laughs> this one is, is pretty excellent. It's really straight on the line. This one is close, but I think it pulled when I started sewing it. This one is, is a little off, just to be totally frank. And the one next to it is a little off. Um, and I'll have to tell you, it doesn't bother me much, which is really a surprise because I'm pretty precise. When you just take in the block, this is one of those things, it's like you don't look at that and go, one of those little two inch squares is, it's a little off. Um, or maybe you do, but I don't even notice it. Um, this one is actually pretty straight on and then this one pulled. These are both cotton, well, that's the same shirt actually. It's cotton poly and it crawls every time I sew it and I'm gonna stop using it, except I like it. I had this plan to use, these all came from the yokes of shirts, those denim and flower shirts that I just adore. And my husband loved this block so much that he suggested, why don't you just make more of those blocks? And just as you get interesting shirts and interesting yokes and interesting pieces, just add to those blocks and then eventually one day you'll have a whole quilt. And I actually thought that was a fantastic idea. So I'm gonna show you the second block Ta-da! So here we go. Again, these are all yokes. This may have been a whole shirt, but I just liked it so much because it, if, you, if you were to zoom in close, it's an orange peel pattern. Um, but these little turquoise circles, I love so much. Here's the plaid again. This one, pretty good. This one, pretty good. This one did exactly what it did on the other and crawled and is a little bit crooked. Um, but again, as you take in these two blocks, this one has a slightly cooler color palette. This one has this golden yellow in it. And so what I'm kind of hoping as I go is that like maybe down the road, there will be some that have a little bit of pink or a little bit of purple or a little bit of red. And the overall take of this quilt will be this navy with some very interesting yokes and cuffs, and this is going to take me forever. <laughs> but it's on my sewing table right now. Actually, I shouldn't call this on my sewing table. I should call it on my sewing table and every flat surface in the house because that's just about the truth. But this is what I'm working on right now just as I go and find shirts that are interesting or yokes that are interesting, I'm just making more of these and adding to this. And then of course my Christmas quilt that will be done by next Christmas and, <laughs> and, and um, all of the plaids that I have stacked up over here off camera that will be cut down and used probably in a video before long, um, just to talk about how to mix and match plaids with each other and with solids and so on and so forth. So that's what I'm working on. Thanks for joining me. If you like this particular 
um, video and you like the idea of seeing some of my works in progress, let me know because if it's um, something that you enjoy, then we'll continue to do these uh, moving forward on the channel. I'm Kathy Martin. This is the Catbird Quilts. Thank you so much for watching.